Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation Public Information Open House for Improvements to U.S. 1792 Orlando Avenue, also known as State Road SR 15 SR 600, from south of Nottingham Street to south of Monroe Avenue in Orange County. The financial project ID number for this project is 408-429-2. The U.S. 1792 project is located in Orange County and is primarily within the City of Winter Park limits. The project begins south of Nottingham Street, just south of the Orlando and Winter Park City limits, and ends south of Monroe Avenue at the Winter Park and Maitland City limits. This project is 2.1 miles long and includes seven signalized intersections. On the north end of the project, there are Lynx Transit bus routes and stops on US 1792 that provide connections to and from the Winter Park Village Transit Center. On the south end of the project, just south of Orange Avenue, SunRail crosses US 1792. The original US 1792 roadway was constructed as a three-lane section in the 1930s. In 1968, US 1792 was widened to a five-lane roadway with a two-way center turn lane south of Lee Road and a four-lane divided roadway north of Lee Road. Projects to rehabilitate the US 1792 concrete pavement were completed for south of Nottingham Avenue to Lee Road in 2008 and for Lee Road to Lake Avenue in 2014. In 2004, FDOT conducted a Project Development and Environment PD&E study to evaluate US 1792 from Norfolk Avenue to Monroe Avenue within the city limits of Winter Park. The purpose of the PD&E study was to develop congestion management alternatives that would improve traffic conditions along this heavily traveled corridor. In 2016, with the State Road 423 Lee Road extension under construction and the Denning Drive project under design, FDOT updated the US 1792 corridor study to ensure that the 2004 PD&E study recommendations remained valid. The findings of the corridor assessment report showed that, in general, the preferred alternative is still viable for the projected 2040 conditions. The US 1792 preferred alternative that is currently being designed from Nottingham Avenue to Orange Avenue will maintain the existing roadway footprint and sidewalks. Improvements involve rehabilitating the roadway pavement, implementing the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA, upgrades such as reconstructing or repairing the sidewalks, and installing pedestrian gates and a raised curbed island at the SunRail crossing. From Orange Avenue to Gay Road, the US 1792 roadway footprint will be reduced by about five and a half feet on both sides of the roadway, which will allow for wider sidewalks. On this section of US 1792, four 11-foot travel lanes with a 12-foot two-way center left turn lane will be provided. The bike lanes on US 1792 will be removed. Bike traffic on US 1792 will be accommodated on the newly reconstructed Denning Drive bike route via Harmon Avenue on the south and Solana Avenue on the north, along with several connecting streets such as Morse Boulevard. From Gay Road to Lee Road, the US 1792 travel lanes will have the same 11-foot widths. Dedicated left turn lanes will be separated from oncoming traffic by a raised concrete separator. From Lee Road to the end of the project, south of Monroe Avenue, improvements will include rehabilitating the roadway travel lanes by repairing and replacing damaged concrete slabs, reconstructing the median, curbs, gutters, and milling, and resurfacing the southbound lanes. FDOT will also upgrade the storm sewer drainage system. FDOT is currently studying the conceptual access management plan for the median openings between Lee Road and Monroe Avenue to improve safety. US 1792 median openings currently being evaluated are Glendon Parkway, Solana Avenue, Elvin Avenue, and Monroe Avenue. 
FDOT is also conducting a study to determine if a traffic signal is needed at the US 1792 at Solana Avenue intersection. As part of this project, the existing storm sewer conveyance system on US 1792 will be upgraded to improve drainage, especially during storm events. Improvements will include replacing and adding additional inlets along the corridor and upgrading the existing US 1792 storm sewer trunk line as needed. FDOT is currently evaluating potential locations for mid-block raised median pedestrian crossings for the following locations. South of the Sunrail Crossing between Norfolk and Leith, between Indiana Avenue and Michigan Avenue, between Minnesota Avenue and North Kentucky Avenue, and between Comstock Avenue and Beachview Avenue. As part of this project, three U.S. 1792 intersections will be reconstructed, Fairbanks Avenue, Morse Boulevard, and Webster Avenue. New traffic signal mast arms will replace existing strain pole signals at Orange Avenue, Minnesota Avenue, Fairbanks Avenue, Morse Boulevard, and Webster Avenue. In addition, the existing mast arms at Gay Road and Lee Road may require upgrades. The project will also provide Americans with Disability Act compliant sidewalk improvements, evaluation of intersection pedestrian crosswalk timings, and upgraded lighting to improve pedestrian safety at intersections. FDOT has an existing Intelligent Transportation System, or ITS, fiber optic line within the corridor. This system will be improved to provide expanded capabilities in the future. This project includes landscaping and streetscaping opportunities as we reconstruct the Fairbanks Avenue, Morse Boulevard, and Webster Avenue intersections. FDOT and the City of Winter Park are working together to identify additional aesthetic, landscaping, streetscaping, and lighting improvements to revitalize the U.S. 1792 corridor. An important part of the design will be for FDOT to develop temporary traffic control plans that minimize the impacts to stakeholders during construction. This effort involves early and ongoing coordination with community and business stakeholders. The department is committed to maintaining vehicular and pedestrian access to properties during construction and minimizing the length of time for traffic disruptions and diversions. To do so, we've identified construction work zones that will typically limit work to one side of the roadway at a time. Also, we will limit the length of work zones to a few blocks or a single intersection to reduce impacts to adjacent properties. Temporary traffic control to construct the proposed improvements include temporary lane closures for work on the roadway and storm sewer system, temporary lane closures or detours for intersection reconstruction, and temporary pedestrian diversions or detours for work on the sidewalks, utilities, and upgrades to the storm sewer system. It should be noted that this project is not currently funded for construction. FDOT and the City of Winter Park are aware of the important role that US 1792 serves as an alternative to Interstate 4 during the I-4 Ultimate Project construction. FDOT has developed a community awareness plan for this project to ensure ongoing coordination with local agencies, including the City of Winter Park, the Cities of Orlando and Maitland, Orange County, Metro Plan Orlando, and Lynx. This public information open house is the first of many opportunities for community members to learn about the project, ask questions, and provide input. We will hold ongoing community and business meetings with local stakeholders during design, and we will keep you informed through newsletters and online at cflroads.com. Please be sure to complete a comment form if you'd like to be added to our mail and email lists. If you received a letter inviting you to this meeting, you're already on our mailing list. The design schedule for this project is about two years. Public involvement and community outreach will be ongoing and will include a series of driveway and access management coordination meetings over the next year. We expect to hold the public hearing in late 2019 to provide opportunity for public input before the plans and right-of-way maps are completed in 2020.
For Title VI considerations, this meeting and project are being conducted without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, Florida Department of Transportation District 5, Mailing address, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720. Telephone number, 386-943-5367. Email, jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. Or, Jacqueline Paramore. State Title VI Coordinator, Florida Department of Transportation. Mailing address, 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399. Telephone number, 850-414-4753. Email, Jacqueline.Paramore at dot.state. Dot fl dot us. All inquiries or complaints will be handled in a prompt and courteous manner according to FDOT procedure. FDOT welcomes your comments. There are several ways to provide your input and comment on this project. You can speak with a project representative at this meeting, complete a comment form and leave it with us tonight, send your comments by mail or email, or by calling the FDOT project manager, or visit the project website at www.cflroads.com and click on the Ask a Question button. The project contact is Eliode Joseph, FDOT project manager, Florida Department of Transportation, District 5. Mailing address, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720. Telephone number 386-943-5388. Email eliode.joseph at dot.state.fl.us. This presentation will restart from the beginning in about two minutes.